thanks, Lorraine. It, yes, it's, it has been a long time. And your uh, very kind introduction reminds me that there's a, a fine line between tribute and obituary, and I think you erred on the <laughs> You erred, on, you erred on the side of the former. Yes, you spoke a lot about uh, Queensland, and in fact, I'd never been there till I went for the job interview. Deliberately, I should say, I left 20 years to the day after I arrived, after everything what I thought could be done was done, and returned a couple of years later to civilization. And it's always good to be reminded of uh, the rewards of living in Melbourne, not the least of which are exhibitions like this. Because the one thing I missed when I went to Queensland, notwithstanding my interests in Asia and my interests in modern and contemporary art, was art history. And Queensland was the youngest read uh, the uh, youngest state gallery and opened in 95. I mean, it, it was later than some of the regional galleries of Victoria. Its collections were pretty patchy and there are works, historical works here, which are, are not matched uh, by works in the collection of Queensland Art Gallery. And that's why that whole emphasis went towards the art of our time. And from that, the, uh, the Asia Pacific Triennial emerged. But my enduring and deep interest in, in art history was born out of a curiosity that I had in, as an art student. Uh, and secondly, the nature of the collections in Warrnambool and Bendigo. Which brings me to the point about a, a, a kind of strange phenomenon of being here to open an exhibition as panoramic as this. And I mentioned this to Lorraine the other day when she rang me and I, I do now have time for some introspection and reflection and I do find it somewhat strange that in a civilised Western democracy like Australia of 23 million people, essentially there's one gallerist and dealer looking at Australian art history and handling it, and it's Lorraine. And we recalled the times of Joseph Brown and Terry Clune and Frank MacDonald and Chris Deutscher and what have you. I can speculate, but I can't put my finger on the button of, as to why a preoccupation with art history has become thinner in Australia. And this kind of commitment that you show to the serious presentation and scholarly uh, presentation of Australian historical art is really critical and has never been more critical. And I was uh, equally delighted to open the show because catalogue number one is Von Gerard. And in a post-directorial life, I am now allowed to not be as generous as I might be. I can follow my own preoccupations and interests, be as disparaging as I will and feel liberated and adore the art that I enjoy and be exhilarated. And, you know, for my money, Von Gerard is the finest 19th century Australian painter, bar none, start to end. And I think if we look at, you know, all the historical art historical boxes that we to contain art in, you know, we know what classicism is, we know what romanticism is, we know what a kind of um, exploratory realism is in the terms of uh, the 19th century uh, colonial art. But here with Von Gerard, you, you find someone who is truly a, a romantic classicist with a preoccupation with science and history. I mean, the boxes just don't fit this extraordinary temperament. And that's why it's a great pleasure to look at that work and continue to try and find the two dolphins in it that Lorraine assures me are there. And I'll have a look. I've mistaken birds for dolphins, I've waves for dolphins, but it's there. Equally, something like Thomas Clarke's wispy, beautiful romanticism of Murrumbidgee is an astonishing work. There are a number of personal reasons why I relate to that, not the least of which is a discovery I gave you the other day of my great-great-grandfather called Joseph Masters, who Daniel Thomas thinks must have met, uh, uh, must have met Thomas Clark. That's an indulgent, I'll put that to, uh, to, uh, to one side. And I mentioned to Lorraine, she said it's okay that I shouldn't feel too bad about dwelling on the perpendicular pronoun when I talk about some of the art that's here, because Fred Williams, I used to know pretty well and have a small portrait he, he did of me because I wanted to be an artist at the VCA. I was interested in landscape. I went down to Sturton Nolan Street and put in a five cents in the telephone box and rang him and his generosity was kind enough to uh, invite me over and it began what was quite a, a warm relationship. And then I look at the Fred Williams that are here today and I'm reminded how some of the conversations that we had, there are certain phrases and sentences that I've never forgotten. 
And if we, we look at that work over there, the, you know, with the black and the orange of 1966, is it Rodney? Yeah. 68, 66. He, I remember he, he once said to me, the, thing, the reason I like Matisse is because you can use black, green, pink, orange, and you can make a perfect work of, uh, work of art out of it. All the things that, as natural juxtapositions, uh, shouldn't, you know, with National Gallery School teaching, was his experience in the late 40s, early 50s, would have instructed him was not a normal course of conduct. Equally, the reach of his art historical imagination, his later interest in Japan and China, and the verticality of all these marks and the single uh, beautiful sort of calligraphic gestures, his, the flatness of uh, the New York School, his, the breadth of his art historical interests and his instinctive response to the landscape marks him out as, and it's a word that's bandied around far too often, a true 20th century Australian genius of painting. As I said, I'm allowed to be selective, and I won't be too, I won't be too much long, longer, but just to look at little moments here which are really important to Australian art history. The, the Olsen of 1958 over there is such a strong painting and such a profound precursor to the U Butte pictures that followed within two years. And, you know, he'd returned from Europe, back in Australia, and I don't want to be disparaging to anyone that has late works of Albert Tucker with explorers' heads and cork dangling from leather hats, but that is international painting in 1958, and that is an extraordinary work. Equally, the one that sits opposite of the uh, James Cantor, the uh, called Dead Girl, and the story that goes with it, but the, uh, the brutal, rom deep, romantic, and dark, brooding honesty in that picture is something quite extraordinary. And again, it, it reflects to the, uh, to the dark brooding, but quite differently brooding work of Clarice Beckett on the left-hand side as you come in, where she almost whispers her pictures into existence. They're quite, they're quite extraordinary and beautiful in, in that regard. The thing that I like about this exhibition, that it's, it, it's sort of both withheld and it's declarative. The greatness of individual artists and the importance of the works are self-evidently declarative, but because they are so self-assured, there's kind of a natural withheldness to them, which gives you the confidence to look at them and know that you're dealing with important and very serious art. In fact, no more so than the Drysdale when Australia has an aesthetic and propensity, whether it's in literature, film, or the visual arts, to do the heroic with the desert, to do the her heroic with the regional and the outback and the subject matter. And there's something about Drysdale which is beautifully withheld, perfectly confident, great poise. There is no bombast, but they're not timid either. Works like the, the portrait sitting over there, I think act as a wonderful counterpoint to, you know, the declarative bombast that Australia is sometimes prone for in public life or in um, political life and sometimes culture and the arts itself. So that's, that's, my, that's my little snapshot of things that I, I really like. And the reason, I'll close by saying is, the reason that I like exhibitions like that and I admire what Lorraine does is that having a lot to do with, with Venice and with modern and contemporary art, there are far too many people in Australia, A, with an interest in the arts, B, sometimes moving into collecting, who think that ochre, brown and dark pictures are something you grow out of. Art history, you grow out of it and then you just get cool and you collect what's happening now. Well, that's not, for my mind, that's not to be on the right side of civilization. That's the kind of vapidness that we can do without. And this is why exhibitions like this, with its historical and scholarly underpinnings, are really important. And I don't wish to create too much competition for you, but I wish there were more people like Lorraine uh, who could do things to, uh, to shape our understanding of what, what's happening now but also our reflection on what was, has been important. And with that eight minutes, I declare the exhibition open. Thank you. <laughs>